Sometimes you see something in a video game that makes you think, oh god, not this again. This is why today we're diving into the top 10 hidden videos and cutscenes in video games, part two. Brought to you by Enlisted. Available now on PC, PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S, as well as PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Enlisted is a large-scale World War II multiplayer shooter with cross-platform play that features extremely faithful historical accuracy, a unique AI squad-based gameplay that always keeps the action fresh with you in the center of battle. And the best part is, it's free. Use my link down below to download Enlisted today and receive an exclusive bonus now. Psychonauts 2. Thanks to the people down below for submitting this discovery. 2021 Psychonauts 2 is the long awaited sequel to Double Fine's 2005 beloved platformer that follows children with psychic powers training to be Psychonauts, an international task force of psychic agents. The sequel seems to have met players' expectations, though one discovery was found no one could have ever predicted. As in the level Hollis's Hot Street, if the player were to take a pen and throw it at the maternity ward sign, the game would suddenly cut to <laughs> Raz in labor? Keep it inside, Raz. We're almost there. You're doing so well, darling. Uh... Why am I pregnant? There's no time, Raz. Lobato's consciousness is about to erupt out of your psychic uterus. The hell? What? You're doing really, really well, Raz. I don't need to hear that. Mia, I need that clown makeup. I'm almost done. Quickly, Raz. Kiss this piglet's behind. Lobato is almost defeated for good. What? Why don't I remember any of this? You want to remember this? No. That's what I thought. Push. Push. Um. Push. Right. The video ends with text on screen saying pregnant Raz opening is a great idea. No, it's not. The only explanation for this video that makes any sense is that it's speculated to have been animated and voiced by Adventure Time creator Pendleton Ward, as throwing the pen at the word Ward to trigger the hidden video appears to be a pun on his name, in addition to the fact that he's credited with a special thanks in the game. Honestly though, the fact that this madness came from Pendleton Ward's mind is probably the least surprising thing about any of this. Ugh, not that dream again. Far Cry 6. Thanks to Sonic Vulture, Fabio Augusto Barbosa, Unstable Mr. Red, and Fabio AGS13 for submitting this through the Odd Header website and Discord. 2021's Far Cry 6 is the sixth main installment in Ubisoft's popular first person shooter franchise, this time set on the fictional island of modern day Yara, where the player assumes the role of guerrilla fighter Danny Rojas, who tends to take down the dictator Anton Castillo. Along the way, players notice that in specific places around the island, in the corner of these crates that can be found all over the map, is a QR code in the corner that when scanned with a phone forwards you to a suspicious link with an mp4 video that appears to have coordinates in the file name. The video that transpires is completely insane. That's it. Playing it back, we can see we're immediately met with a completely unfamiliar cartoon gun chamber who maybe looks like they belong in Family Guy, who we can audibly hear say greetings before the audio trails off into indecipherable noise. The visuals then shift to a Game of Thrones style board of a map with symbols of wildlife and a temple. The most interesting stuff happens in this next image as we see a friggin armored tiger attacking a man. And as far as anyone seems to know, there aren't any armored tigers in this game. In the corners appear to be some blindable messages that disappear too quickly to be read without pausing. The left corner message appears to say Litter 05, and the right message appears to say Sky Temple. The thing is, unless this is referring to Elden Ring, nobody knows what the hell Sky Temple this is talking about. We're then showed the map again before it appears to be shot at and blood is weirdly sprayed across the screen. And the video ends with this little guy again. To this day, in the more than 16 months since Far Cry 6 initially came out, no one still has any idea where this Sky Temple is, what's the deal with the armored tigers, who the hell this dude's supposed to be, or what this has to do with anything. One thing's for sure, even though no one can seem to piece together any of this, it's not as though Ubisoft thought it'd go unnoticed. You can't go five feet without finding this QR code somewhere. It's not exactly hidden discreetly. Goat Simulator 3 Thanks to the Shadow Slayer for submitting this mystery on the Odd Header Discord. Goat Simulator 3, released in November of 2022, don't let the name fool you, is actually the second, not the third installment in the popular open world goat simulation series. A game that actually plays a lot like an early Tony Hawk game if you were a literal goat. The series, as you might have gathered, doesn't exactly take itself seriously, and is full of tons of random discoveries and hidden easter eggs for players to discover. One video found toward the end of the game, however, seems to document a discovery that's abnormally odd, even by goat simulation simulator standards, as in the ending sequence when the game breaks the fourth wall. On the in-game computer monitor, there's a minimized internet browser window showing a link. If we were to visit this link ourselves, we would see it leads to a YouTube video from 2011 of an old couple who believes the electronic toy skeleton is possessed. 
Mother A couple yell profanities at the supposed spirit until the skeleton shakes his ass at them at turbo speed, at which point they beg for Jesus to save them. In the name of Jesus Christ, we want you out of here! I don't know what I'm more amazed by. This skeleton's twerking skills or this couple's inability to recognize what's most likely electronic malfunction. It's still a mystery why it took this couple so long to simply unplug the cord. Monsters Inc. Thanks to this dude plays 8106 for submitting this discovery on the Aunt Hedder Discord. Monsters Inc. is a platformer based on the classic Pixar movie, released on Game Boy Color in advance and later on the PlayStation 2. In an unusual move, the Game Boy versions actually released before the movie came out in 2001, and the PlayStation 2 version released months later in 2002. Rumored online to have been the result of a deeply troubled development. The game's reliance on movie extras appears to back this up, as there's very little game content or challenge as the game is so kid-friendly it lacks a life system. And only has one boss at the end of the game. This also seems to explain why so many seemingly unused assets were left in the date of the game, as there were cutscenes discovered for Sully that don't appear were ever meant to be found. In the first animation, we can see Sully being surrounded by the CDA before getting his fur shaved off, similar to what happens to George in the movie, which almost seems like it could have been a game over or death sequence before the game was changed to appeal to an even younger player base. The second animation, however, is a bit more unexplainable, as in this one, Sully appears to emerge frozen in carbonite like Hans in the Empire Strikes Back when he fails to pay his debt back to Jabba the Hutt. What? I guess this could only mean that Sully was in debt with Jabba as well. Damn. I guess Monsters University wasn't cheap. Super Hot. Thanks to Doe and Ben O for submitting this discovery on the Odd Header website and Discord. Super Hot is a unique first person shooter bullet time puzzle game released in 2016 for home computers and VR. Re released for Nintendo Switch, home consoles, and more VR devices in the years since. The game is most well known for its mechanic in which time only moves forward if the player moves, giving them time to strategize in slow motion. Unfortunately, the game doesn't give you time to process this next discovery. As if you were to look in the menus, you can find a video folder in a file called rsm.avi, which reveals this extremely unnerving video. These people are completely fine. They are just enjoying a new exciting video game. Although it takes just 10 seconds to play. play. This game brings an endless competitive entertainment to you, your, your family, and your friends. All you need is a tele tele telephone and some cardboard. Play responsibly, and don't mix with drugs. Turns out, if you can believe it, this is an actual trailer for a mysterious game called Ready Set Mental, a since disappeared Android game for the now discontinued VR platform Google Cardboard. Remember that thing? Anyone? Which I guess was pretty fitting for Ready Set Mental, a game in which the only objective was apparently to shake your head and scream as much as possible in order to earn a high score. Sounds fun. The credits at the beginning of the trailer named the Super Hot team, which at least partially solves the question of why they decided to include it in the game's menus, though it still leaves the most obvious question unanswered. The f Unfortunately, it doesn't look like we'll ever know, as from what I've searched, Ready Set Mental looks like it's no longer available anywhere, and has been completely removed from the Play Store. Damn, guess that means I'm gonna be missing out on this. Can't say I'm too disappointed. Grand Theft Auto Vice City. Grand Theft Auto Vice City is one of Rockstar's landmark titles, as their acclaimed 2002 follow-up to 2001's Grand Theft Auto 3, very different from its late 2021 re-release in Grove Street Games' Grand Theft Auto The Trilogy, the Definitive Edition, which ended up being one of the lowest-reviewed games of the year. While the modern-gen Definitive Edition was criticized for being far from definitive, GTA YouTuber Vadim M was still pleasantly surprised to find Grove Street Games accidentally left Rockstar's original studio files in the date of the first day the Definitive Edition came out. Before Grove Street quickly removed them. Oops. But not before Vadim M was able to uncover a plethora of leftover content that hadn't been seen in nearly 20 years. Among the internal files of the game, Vadim M was able to uncover a file called moviedemo.sc. While the code inside the file refers to it being part of a mission called XXXX, launching the file, which initially appeared to be a mission file, actually turned out to be what appeared to be a long in-game cutscene. The scene begins with the game's protagonist, Tommy Versetti, being released from the Washington Beach Police Station, where he was being detained for an unknown reason. Tommy proceeds to make the world's slowest approach towards his car parked directly in front of the police station with an unknown lady driver at the wheel, while two other unknown dudes watch patiently from afar as Tommy slowly inches his way inside the vehicle. As soon as Tommy's in, the two get to moving and the dudes from afar are quick to follow their tail. Things aren't calm for long, as it seems Tommy and company catch on to being followed, and quickly the scene escalates to a car chase. Then we see a dude ordering pizza 
Oh, and we're back in action. Tommy bails from the vehicle with a shotgun and heads toward the Malibu Club, while the two goons follow carrying micro SMGs. Tommy heads up to the second floor and sees the club manager and shoots his ass dead. Tommy runs back down the stairs and starts firing off a rifle he obtains out of thin air and kills his two pursuers. Then he kills the bartender for seemingly no reason at all. Tommy runs back outside and into the getaway car still waiting for him outside, seemingly successfully assassinating his target without any major hiccups, except as soon as they drive they're instantly ambushed by the police. Fortunately, Tommy's got himself a skilled getaway driver and oh, watch out for that randomly placed car. Damn. They're dead. And that's where the scene ends. Many theories surround what this cutscene could have been. While Vadim himself believes the cutscene may have been tied to a cut side mission where Tommy would have filmed an action sequence for a movie studio. This theory seems somewhat plausible, as Tommy does work with a movie producer Steve Scott in the story. Except that producer strictly makes a different kind of film. However, Vadim points to additional unused assets in the game that appear to back this theory. Such as a line of dialogue from Steve who instructs him to steal a vehicle for a movie he's doing. We need a car chase scene and uh well the budget can't really stretch to it so uh, i've left some wheels at the airport uh you know what to do, huh? Additionally, most of the props in the cutscene are labeled movie and the data, except for the cop cars and barrels that ultimately kill Tommy. Problem is, is Tommy actually stole a car for a film shoot and these cops weren't part of the production. Wouldn't that mean at the end of this cutscene he actually died? That just seems a little bit odd. Siphon Filter Dark Mirror Thanks to Hex Height for submitting this discovery through oddheader.com. Siphon Filter Dark Mirror is the fifth installment in the third person shooter stealth series. Released in 2006 for PlayStation Portable and a year later for PlayStation 2. The PS2 version was released with a teen ESRB rating, despite the original PSP version being rated M. And some of the game's original mature content was censored and approved to adhere to the chains, including some hidden risque content that very few players knew about. As in the first bonus mission in the game, Goodnight Sweetheart, Gary is sent to eliminate the character. Elsa and Mara as well as their bodyguards. After taking out all of the guards, a cutscene plays of Elsa and Mara kissing on the balcony, before Gary must ruin the moment by killing them both. Thanks Gary. However, the cutscene actually has a different, little known hidden alternative version if the player were to set the difficulty to hard, as by eliminating all the bodyguards without alerting them, and using only headshots. The cutscene plays with Elsa and Mara in lingerie. Holy sh**. Didn't see that one coming. Killing the two after seeing them in their lingerie, the player can unlock three hidden evidence logs, where Gary mostly talks about how it's not right to spy on women in their underwear, but that it's part of the job. Right. I guess now we know why this discovery only works on hard mode. Sonic Mega Collection. Thanks to Somerset Banjo for submitting this mystery on oddhair.com. The Sonic Mega Collection released in 2002 for the GameCube was a compilation of seven Sonic games originally released for the Sega Genesis. Although data miners made a discovery on the disc that doesn't seem to have anything to do with the Blue Hedgehog himself, as on the disc are three videos that don't seem to belong to any of the games. The first one is pretty simple and just appears to be an animation for water. The second, which actually looks pretty badass, is also never used, which is disappointing because it actually looks like it would have been a really cool game. While it's mysterious what's actually going on here. It's theorized to be here to test a video compression technique used in the games. Alright, makes sense, but why is the third unused video on the disc just a live action clip of a man getting off a trolley in San Francisco? What's even more confusing is that these random videos take up 20% of the entire disc space, in a collection that left out other fan favorites from other consoles because of what was thought to be a lack of disc space. Great, so instead of getting to play more classics like Sonic CD or Sonic Triple Trouble, we instead get to watch this dude get off a train. Yay. Unbelievable. Intellivision Lives. Thanks to Koban42 for submitting this discovery on oddheader.com. Intellivision Lives is a compilation of over 60 games originally released on Mattel's 1979 home console and television, designed as a competitor to the Atari 2600, although it ultimately ended up failing, selling only a fraction of Atari's greater sales. The compilation was released in 1998 for PC and Mac with later ports to the PS2, Xbox, GameCube, and Nintendo DS. Intellivision Lives also features bonus content, including programmer interviews and a short documentary on the history of the company, which can be accessed from the main menu, where we can get a glimpse of what it was like inside the Intellivision offices in the 80s, which just seems like a typical bunch of 80s nerds, who you can see both working and attending parties in parts of the documentary. However, it seems Koban42 may have gotten a bigger peek inside the Intellivision office than he ever expected, as Koban found if you were to listen to the included My Intellivision song all the way to its conclusion, and then tried to quit the game right after, you'd suddenly be hit with this video. The marketing research, the marketing research, the marketing research. Oh God, I forgot what I was just saying! 
Huh? What appears to be bloopers for the interviews were included as the Easter egg Coban found. Yeah. Actually, I'm the same complete, well-rounded individual I've always been. Uh, what was that part of the interview about? But with this amount of Tom Fullery in the office, it's not exactly a mystery why they didn't beat Atari. Metal Gear Solid 2. Sons of Liberty. 2001's Metal Gear Solid 2 is considered the masterwork of Madman game developer Hideo Kojima, in addition to being proclaimed one of the greatest games of all time, which also has been noted through the years as being weirdly predictive of many real-world events. Evidence, however, has been found in the files of the game that reveals that Metal Gear Solid 2 was going to be a bit different before release, but was possibly changed because of yet another weird similarity to another real-life event, as the scene was uncovered on the disc that never actually appeared in the game, which showcased real-life footage of the New York stock exchange as the characters ride in and aims discuss the effects of an EMP attack that would have shut down the exchange. And this is what they plan to do right over Manhattan. The New York Stock Exchange will suffer the same fate. If one of the key movers of world economy stops functioning, it could mean the beginning of a global depression. Black Monday will look like a picnic in comparison. It's unknown why exactly this scene was removed, but it's believed to have been cut due to its similarity to the real-life attacks in Manhattan that happened on 9-11 in 2001, which was only two months before Metal Gear Solid 2's release. Another cutscene was found that furthers this theory, this time being a clip of a news report covering the Statue of Liberty washing up on Ellis Island after it was removed from its normal location on Liberty Island. At long last, it seems that she will go through the immigration process. Will Lady Liberty finally get her green card? It's revealed in the game script that the Statue of Liberty ends up here because of a scene that was removed that's never been recovered, where the United States Navy's mobile fortress in the story known as the Arsenal Gear crashes into Manhattan, devastating the entire area and taking out the Statue of Liberty with it. In the more than 20 years since the game was released, the actual scene of the Arsenal Gear crash has never seen the light of day, though its removal in this instance more clearly points to the eerie resemblance to the then-recent disaster on September. September 11th. Confirmation of the crash's existence can still be found on the very rare document of Metal Gear Solid 2 disc that was paired with the initial copies of the European version's release. This disc allows you to view every 3D model in the game, and just so happens to include this full model of the Arsenal Gear crash scene, giving us just a small glimpse of what the Manhattan disaster would have looked like in the game before the real-world disaster happened that made the developers quickly remove it. Spooky. Surely putting this somewhere in at least the top 20 strangest examples of how Hideo Kojima's work tends to be weirdly predictive for the future. Does he know something that we don't? And thanks again to Enlisted for sponsoring this video. Enlisted is a large-scale multiplayer game with the unique twist of having an AI squad with you on the battlefield. Not only do you get to command your squad across the field, you can also assume full control of any of your squad mates at any moment with the press of a button, allowing you to stay in the action longer after your death as you reassume control of another squad member until your entire squad is donezo. With attention to detail and historical accuracy that allows you to realistically recreate battles like the invasion of Normandy, as well as being free. Enlisted is definitely worth a go on either your PC, PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X or S, as well as PlayStation 4, Xbox One. Check out my link down below to download Enlisted today and receive three days of premium time and several orders for troops and weapons as an exclusive bonus now. And I'll see you on the battlefield. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. And if you know of any other hidden videos and video games that you'd like to see me cover, submit through oddheader.com, come join the Discord, or even send me a shout through Twitter or Reddit. And thanks again to Slippy Slides for helping get the footage in this video. Feel free to subscribe to him down below as well. Shout out to Angel the Fox, Ash Photography, Andrew FM, Bitwiff27, Chad Biscuits, Combat15 Bull, Dear Mid Crowley, Flex, Grow Ups, Ed Moffat, Eddie Toxman the Bleach Primid, Fox M Cloud 123, Miss Arctic Foxy, Rackman 22, Red Team Medic, Riley S, Robert Eisenman, Rolkot Mifula, Starcore 2, Tenryu Yu Yarnet, Taryn Stock, Towerizer, and Yan Baneer for their Patreon support. Stay tuned.